Hi, and welcome to Season 2 of That's Roddy Mysterious, a podcast of short tales about true mysteries. What created the Potomsky Crater? Who was involved in the 1963 Great Train Robbery? I'm not going to solve those mysteries, but they'll be interesting to learn about. I'm your host, Kelly with an I. Transcripts and references for all episodes can be found at thatsruddymysterious.wordpress.com. No apostrophe and no exclamation point. Today's tale is about the Brinks Matt heist. On November 26, 1983, six armed robbers carried out the largest gold heist in Britain's history. At around 6.40 a.m. on November 26, 1983, six men carrying guns and wearing balaclavas broke into the Brinks Matt warehouse near Heathrow Airport in London, England. At the time, the facility was thought to be one of the most secure facilities in the world. They were let in by Anthony Black, a Brinks Matt security guard. The men expected to get away with about three million pounds in cash because that's what Black said was stored there, but they stole so much more. On that November day, Unit 7 of Heathrow's International Trading Estate was heavily guarded and full of both cash and gold bullion. When the six men broke in, they overpowered the guards. They handcuffed the staff and hit one staff member over the head with a pistol. Then they poured gasoline over one guard and threatened to set him on fire if he didn't give the thieves the combination to the safe. Reluctantly, the guard gave the thieves the combination. The information provided by Anthony Black allowed the six robbers to disarm the electronic security system and easily overpower the guards. Once inside the safe, the thieves discovered about 6,800 gold bars belonging to Johnson Matthew Bankers LTD and weighing about three tons. The gold bars were in 76 cardboard packages measuring six feet by three feet by two feet. They also found 100,000 pounds worth of diamonds, both cut and uncut. The heist itself took so much longer than expected because of the large bounty. It took the men about two hours in the use of a nearby forklift to load all of the gold into their van. Around 8.15, the thieves left the warehouse. Upon leaving the safe, one of the thieves wished one of the guards a Merry Christmas. At about 8.30, just 15 minutes later, one of the guards broke free of his handcuffs and sounded the alarm, but it was already too late. The thieves had driven off. Supposedly, the van broke down on their way back from Heathrow. All in all, the thieves had taken 26,360,778 pounds worth of diamonds and gold. Today, the goods would be worth 80 million pounds. The investigation began immediately. Scotland Yard's Flying Squad Chief Commander, Frank Carter, led the investigation. He quickly narrowed down the pool of thieves, settling on Mickey McAvoy and Brian Robinson as the two thieves. Carter also realized that Anthony Black had arrived late to work on the day of the theft and concluded he must have been involved in the theft. Black eventually confessed to his part and told police about Robinson's involvement. He turned on both McAvoy and Robinson and in return received a prison sentence of just six years. Neither Robinson nor McAvoy was trying to lay low. Both were spending money lavishly in the days following the heist, which confirmed their involvement. John Goldfinger Palmer had the ability to melt down the gold. On November 28, Palmer's neighbors noticed a smelting container operating in Palmer's yard. The neighbors called the police, who didn't investigate very well. Because it was difficult to fence gold bars, the police suspected that the thieves had gone to Palmer to have him smelt down the gold so it could be easily fenced. Fourteen months after the theft, the police finally raided Palmer's premises. They arrested Palmer, who was eventually cleared of all charges. In December of 1984, Mickey McAvoy and Brian Robinson were put in prison for 25 years each. They were the only two robbers that were convicted for the Brinks Matt robbery. The pair tried to contact the gang in an attempt to get their portions of the money. They wanted to turn it over in exchange for a lower sentence, but there is no honor amongst thieves. The gang said the money was no longer theirs to control, and the gang left the two high and dry to serve their sentences. The thieves went to Kenneth Noy to have him sell the gold. The robbers sent Noy 11 golden ingots at a time. Noy had purchased 11 ingots legally, so he had paperwork to accompany each shipment, making it look legal. Noy smelted the gold with copper to disguise it. 
He then sold the gold through different jewelers using his legitimate business, Scadlin LTD, to do so. He claimed back the VAT on each sale, although it was never paid out. Then he deposited the money he got into various banks around Bristol. In just four months, Noy had deposited 10.5 million pounds into the banks and taken it all out in 50 pound notes. In one day, he withdrew 350,000 pounds in 50 pound notes. The serial numbers of all of the notes started with A24, so it became very easy to identify the thieves as they spent the money. One of the banks found the transaction suspicious and called the police. In January of 1985, DC John Fordham went into Noy's yard during the investigation and Noy stabbed and killed him. Noy pleaded self-defense and was acquitted for this stabbing. While the police were investigating Noy, in 1986, they found 11 gold bars worth 100,000 pounds wrapped in cloth in a nearby drainage ditch. These were the only gold ingots recovered from the robbery. Noy was tried for his part in the robbery. He was convicted of conspiracy to handle the Brinks Matt gold. He was fined 500,000 pounds plus 200,000 pounds costs and sentenced to 14 years in prison. Upon hearing of his conviction, Noy shouted at the jury, I hope you die of cancer. Noy was released from prison in 1990, but was convicted of murder via a road rage incident in November of 2001. On July 7, 1988, 50-year-old Michael Routon was sentenced to 12 years in prison for laundering the proceeds of the Brinks Matt heist. Then in 1992, Gordon Perry, Brian Perry, Patrick Clark, and Gene Savage were jailed for between 5 and 10 years for laundering the gold from the Brinks Matt heist. In total, 33 people were arrested for taking some part in the heist itself or in the aftermath. Fourteen of those people were convicted, but only two of the robbers were ever caught. Everyone suspected of having been involved was sued. More than three million pounds was recovered just from Kenneth Noy, with the full 26 million pounds being recovered overall from the suspects. In fact, it's believed that the insurance company got back more than the 26 million pounds initially stolen. The BBC hosted a documentary about the Brinks Matt robbery. It opens with a quote, if you have bought gold jewelry in Britain since 1984, it is likely to contain traces of the Brinks Matt gold. It's believed that at least half of the gold stolen during the Brinks Matt heist has made its way back into the legitimate gold market. Some believe there was a curse associated with the heist. Most of the people known to be involved are dead. Noy was shot dead, McAvoy was released in 2000 and died in January of 2023. There's evidence of at least three other murders associated with the heist. The heist exposed some serious flaws in the security at Brinks Matt Warehouse. In the aftermath of the heist, Brinks increased their security. What happened to all of the gold that remained unrecovered from the heist? Has it all made its way into the legitimate gold market by now? Who are the four robbers that were never caught? What do you think? Thanks for listening to today's episode of That's Ruddy Mysterious. I'm your host, Kelly with an I. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a review and follow That's Ruddy Mysterious to be updated about new episodes. Tune in next Tuesday for another thought-provoking tale.